The U.S. is developing a rescue plan for Venezuela's economy designed to pump cash into the country through banks, smartphones and apps. But even though the Trump administration isn't rushing to reveal the details, the plan has one key condition. The timeline is to get rid of Maduro. I have no idea when that's going to be. That would begin immediately. It's a question of uh, getting hold of the uh, what I call the machinery of government. The Venezuelan opposition plans to stage a rally in Caracas on Saturday as it tries to maintain momentum in its efforts to oust President Nicolas Maduro. Calls to install Juan Guaido, the leader of the opposition, are also being heard in the U.S., though some there are being a bit economical with the truth as to why they support him, as Caleb Moffin explains. With Venezuela in conflict, the media definitely needs voices to explain. You know, analysts to assess the situation in the country. And it also helps if they can speak perfectly fluent English. So meet Joanna Hossman, speaking in an editorial for the New York Times about Venezuela. This movement on the American left against any U.S. involvement in Venezuela is gaining traction, dangerously glorifying a brutal dictator and promoting inaction. Juan Guaido is a social democrat appointed by the National Assembly, the only remaining democratically elected institution left in Venezuela. She's Venezuelan-American and she's a comedian. She loves to call out critics of U.S. foreign policy because how dare they think they might know more than her when she's an actual Venezuelan. And furthermore, she gives full support to Juan Guaido, the self-appointed U.S.-backed president of Venezuela. But here's a detail the New York Times failed to mention. Her father is Ricardo Haussmann, the economics professor from Harvard University. And Ricardo Haussmann, her father, is currently the envoy of Juan Guaido to the Inter-American Development Bank, the biggest lender in Latin America. It looks a lot like Ms. Haussmann has a pretty big dog in the fight. However, the New York Times presents her as just a liberal-minded Venezuelan who wants what's best for her people. It should be noted that her father has a lot to gain politically and professionally should regime change happen. Very cool of the New York Times not to mention, you know, the fact that Joanna Hausman's dad is an economic advisor for Guaido. Now, the folks who handle ethics at the New York Times have a special section dedicated to possible conflicts of interest from contributors. Staff members must be sensitive that perfectly proper political activity by their spouses, family or companions may nevertheless create conflicts of interest or the appearance of conflict. But in the end, the New York Times didn't really care. They presented her as just another voice. We were aware of her father's biography before publication, but Miss Hausman is an independent adult woman who's built a popular following on her own by producing a portfolio of argued videos about Venezuela via her own YouTube channel. And it wasn't just the New York Times. She made her rounds to BuzzFeed, CNN, and the Four Freedoms Forum. None of them thought that her blatant family ties to Juan Guaido were of any concern. And not presenting the full picture is not all that uncommon in American media. There was a lot of outrage recently when a CNN Q&A with presidential candidate Bernie Sanders stuffed the audience with people tied to elite think tanks and the Democratic Party, but presented them as just average citizens with tough questions. How can a voter like me feel confident in your ability to represent the party. Good evening. There's a lot of misinformation regarding your plan for universal health care. Perhaps the most blatant example of media concealment was Nayira and her tearful testimony before the Congressional Human Rights Caucus. They took the babies out of the incubators, took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. She failed to give her last name, but her tearful testimony plucked America's heartstrings and it paved the way for U.S. support for Kuwait during the Gulf War. It turned out that Nayira was actually the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador. And her story could not be verified. And furthermore, she had arranged to testify without taking an oath, making it legal for her to lie. Yes, when it comes time to push for a certain agenda, the media seems to ignore rather inconvenient facts. But remember, behind every face is a story.